You know, I've been holding off on making this video because the bad guys isn't out on DVD yet. And with it being a cinema release, I can't find any more footage than just the trailers. Except, apparently, I've been living in the days of old because it turns out most movies are available pretty quickly on streaming sites before even the DVD release. So what the hell am I waiting for? It's the scene that changed the bad guys. DreamWorks, after a lengthy run of corporate rearrangements and a release of films with debatable quality, has finally come around with a giant W in the bad guys. Catching our eyes for its unique art style, solid sense of momentum in the animation choices, and hey, the narrative's incredibly fun too. The people like it a lot. And there are many outstanding scenes to highlight as the best. The intro chase scene, the first heist sequence, the cat up the tree scene, a million gerbils, the ending, but the one I want to talk about this time around isn't the emotive dip or a heart to heart. Instead, it's an action scene. As one of the biggest successes this film achieves is its quality of animation and all the little flares within them, not to mention the creativity. So let's showcase them in the most bad guy scene there is in The Bad Guys. It's the reveal of the Crimson Paw. We land ourselves in prison. These are the bad guys after all. Though leading up to it has been an hour and one minute of narrative. The bad guys are recruited to try and be good guys. They do good things. Our protagonist Mr. Wolf is starting to turn and sabotages the bad heist the rest of the team were planning in secret, only to be double crossed by the one who recruited them in the first place. There you go, you're caught up. So now they're imprisoned for a crime they didn't commit with a leader who's turned to the dark side at uh, light side. And Snakey here, Mr. Snake. Wait, are they all seriously just named as Mr. and Mrs. Animal? Huh. Is the least impressed. It's the confrontation breakup section of the movie and the crux of the whole premise. Some people are scary and some people are scared. It's a society of animals where species dictate your path in life to a significant degree. And being a literal tarantula, shark, piranha, snake, and wolf, this is just the cards they've been dealt with. But with Mr. Wolf's new revelation, maybe I don't want to be a what? A bad guy? Don't want to be a bad guy anymore, huh? It heats up until Wolf says maybe the gang truly are holding him back. Take it back! And now it begins. Snake lunges at Wolf, coiling his body around him midair with a little bit of smear framing halfway to really highlight that sense of motion. Not to mention using the creativity of a snake's body to be able to stretch it however they want to, having his face linger up and above as he delivers his line. In one one second move, giving us a chunk of creativity as well as merging 3D CG animation with traditional 2D animation techniques in there a little. The rest of the gang are stunned as the officers now have to intervene, having a particularly animated running cycle as well as teeth that pop from small molars to a real mouthful. Kinda reminds me of the turning red art style, but it's still nice to see a pull away from the norm DreamWorks movies have been covering for a while now. I'm always in favour of something refreshingly new. The fight continues with squeezes and punches until they're split up with prison is no place for fighting uh, tell that to him energetic succinct and gotta love the little addition of the villain glancing at each other in sync and all those expressions but of course it's time for the reveal of what we're really here for <laughs> And the animation really goes ham here. The 2D impact flares, the anime style motion lines, the bright bloom to glow them up and add to the silhouette design they've got going on. The smash cut to a full black and white sheen, it all comes together to make an impact of an entrance. All about speed and presentation. Not to mention the smoke effect and hero pose, followed by a 90 degree turn as they look past the camera. There are so many elements coming together for this small micro moment, whilst editing it together to feel as grounded as possible. It's meant to feel like a single fluid motion of a shot, though there's a match cut in the tilt upwards and there's that shaky cam perspective when they're on the ground. Watch it again. Oh, just beautiful. What? <laughs> And it only continues. Let's list all we can see. More 2D impact lines like a comic book movie or like the little flares of Mitchell's versus Machines. I guess it's the new trend of hybrid animation techniques. Giant signaling from the guards like real cartoon characters, which is just a lot of fun to see. Another hidden cut as the camera swirls from one door to another. Smear framing as she ducks under the swing and sprints away from the camera. It chases after her to build the momentum of the scene as she bolts into action. Close
closing in when she reaches guard two, and this time going over the top. Both times we see the guard's reactions right in the foreground, but now the guard is keeping up, turning to keep their head on target as we follow the eye line to the Crimson Paw 2. The guard now blurred as they're not the focus in this motion anymore, putting in a digital depth of field to direct your eye line. And swinging again, look at this glowing trail line, so dynamic, and it's a smear frame, and it really delivers the power of each attack coming their way. And again the other way, she swings out of frame. Finally overbalanced as her foot implies, all the while the poor cartwheels right to the camera, covering up the whole frame ready for a cut. And all that in just... <laughs> hey look, it's a cut! Time for a whole new approach for the action sequence. Now we're wide as Crimson Paw is back flipping feet into the air, continuing with those smear frames for every little bit of limb motion. Though it's not classical smear frames in the way of entire limbs appearing, for the most part it's just a little bit of running colour swerving from the motion and leaving a trail. But sometimes there are phantom arms. Anyway, now we're getting environmental, using the guard's own tie to spin them round and kick them a few times. <laughs> And with that final kicking, posing out as much as possible as a few teeth pop out and they fall right back into a cell. A mission directive has been established. But how good is an action scene really if it's so one-sided? Let's add a little tension with a little mini loss midway through. And we can see it coming with this preemptive shot of Guard 3's plan. Pushing out the baton sideways with all the action lines. Readying to headlock them. And it works for but a second. Kicking out both legs for a bit of imbalance before finally having to use those arms to get some work in. Elbowing them in the gut for the most <coughs> expressive facial features we've seen yet. Completely winding them. And the tables have turned so quickly once again. But let's keep it creative. Seems to be the shining factor of this movie after all. Screw it. Let's use the guard's own shirt this time to blind them. Cover their face and roll them into that same cell. All the while the camera is spinning around the subject. This is great direction in motion right here. Excuse the pun. Dynamic to witness and creative too. And hey, there's the bad guys stunned in the background. <laughs> Even the baton is rolling through with the occasional full circle trail line. But in keeping momentum up, our next piece interacts within that same shot. Guard 2 is sprinting back into frame for the camera to follow. Doesn't even need to finish their act in this shot. Just being there as an establishment works to make everything feel so much more in sync and certainly helps keep your eyes on the screen. This time for the right reasons and Crimson simply throws them over the top of them, using the guard's momentum against them. Look at that brief look of shock from her. As the paw resumes to sweep the legs of a fourth guard, baton spinning again. You know, I'm not even sure if they actually hit or if this just a fake out to trip them up. Either way, sweet. <laughs> And now another move, Crimson Paw is now rolling along the floor. Every single move they do being wildly different from the next, so you really can't predict them. And it's certainly a way for the animators to show off with the prompt they've got. Outstanding so far. Like, who would have predicted that? Not to mention the motion of the kick that follows. It takes a single frame to reach their face, and then it lingers for several frames to really sell the impact of that hit if the uh, if the expression wasn't telling enough already. And then a roll over the body for an extra flare, of course. Welcome to Halfway. Now that I've realized new movies are available pre-DVD, I'm probably gonna make more of these, so subscribe and tell me what you want us to cover next. You get the idea. Time for a hint of narrative. The bad guys are watching in shock as everything explodes in front of them. A focus on them before bringing us right back to it with a small camera motion to the guard on their right, charging valiantly. Also, without much thought, judging by their body language, but that's all part of the fun, really. Yeah, that was to be expected. And a super fun way to present the events, impossibly instant. But it gets the point across. So what's next this time? Another guard screaming in the foreground as now we've got some fancy bat work. Crimson Paul keeping their face obscured for dramatic effect as they block hits and lock the guard behind his back. Fully expanding now to use their arms fully, as well as their legs for that kickoff. And without fail, those next two batons are spinning of course. Literally every single one has done so so far. Even the first, see? It's just a lot more fun that way. <laughs> Appropriate response. And if you don't confront them, you won't be injured I guess. Great advice for the scaredy cat on the right there. Next guard's given his back to the audience as the camera shakes an over the shoulder shot of him. Tilting up as he looks up to the poor leaping up into the air. An intimidating move considering all the context they've just been blessed with. What a twist! All the variety at play. And the camera highlighted all the more with a drop down to their level and a zoom on their crotch in a kid's movie. 
That's, that's technically true. Though me watching this at 10% speed makes me feel like the belt animation is out of sync with their hands. Also, do most belts solidify at the end like this one does for a moment? Still, with the gag achieved, Crimson is chuffed with himself, and the guard's act of leaping into pose is what throws them off balance. Great stuff. And of course, the batons are off again. Man, is it because I'm watching this so slowly, or is she not even looking at him? Uh, anyway, I love how even the boot is spinning for added effect, as the guard lands with the rest in that one cell. Impact flare on landing. Only two left. These guys. What do you do against an enemy that isn't fighting aggressively for once? Well, they've established they're on the move. We get a reactionary shot from the Crimson Paw looking in their general direction. The guards are now left bickering between themselves in the hopes of escaping, as the Paw uses that well-established shoe from earlier to kick up to level, swinging with all their might and all the camera's attention to propel that boot forwards. The cam goes slow-mo, moves even closer to the point of impact, action lines everywhere, before switching to this super wide-angle perspective, tracking it as it hurls ahead. Huh, I like how the earlier guard spots it mid-trajectory. That's just so fun. And then it cuts to a static side angle to really demonstrate the result, pinging them both with those wide impact flares at record pace. Seriously, that's one frame to hit between the two of them. And they fall in the most angular of poses, and the boot just rubbing it in too. Just such cartoony goodness. And with that, they lock them in and call it an action sequence. Now, I'm not done covering it just yet, but this sequence alone just acts as the pinnacle topic piece to really highlight what ended up making the bad guys so great. The flares of it all. It's so directionally inclined with a fantastic animation aesthetic that benefits all the more through the pure creativity pumped into every moment always unpredictable and not afraid to just have some fun with the cartoony grounding. And of course, it's been a crime that I haven't mentioned the soundtrack underneath this whole thing. Having such a stark motif and instrument. What? <laughs> kicking off many of the motions in sync. Listen to this again. And knowing when to pause at tactical times too and only to end right back at that motif with... <gasps> yes, it turns out it was that one Fox character all along. Not established in this video, but she's the governor of California. Very much good guy aristocrat up until now. Especially with that pronoun fake out at the start. Uh, tell that to him. Now she's got something to say, but first we need a direct introduction, because apparently, all this wasn't enough. The Crimson Paw is a character briefly mentioned at the start of the film, described as the perfect thief that got away with it all, and with this movie taking comic book influences, it's time for a Spider-Verse style backstory dump. Wait a sec, you're the Crimson Paw? Classic freeze frame headshot title. The Queen of Cons. A simple fade transition that works especially well in animation since this shot is technically impossible, realistically. And then... Acrobatic Swiss Army Knife. This is your go-to high style comic book effect, splitting your frame up into literal panels, showing off multiple perspectives at the same time, and even having them swoop in one panel at a time. It's pretty commonly done, but it's oh so dynamic. And then as she's running off, we get this unneeded but well appreciated moment of pausing amongst the moon, a real keyframe spot to burn into our minds, before smearing the whole frame through the motion, obscuring the camera and match cutting to the tilt downwards, back to the prison. What a beat. Guess I'm still the best bad guy the world has ever seen. Ugh. At least I used to be. Unfortunately, I checked and we don't actually see this specifically happen. Though, to be fair, this sequence is fast enough, so we wouldn't have noticed it anyway. That entire action scene was just one minute long. And then, as the climax to the location, naturally, the alarms all blare off and every guard under the sun comes to make an appearance. It's over the top, unrealistic, but boy is it so much fun. First it's a reaction shot, then a first person view to see the confrontation personally, and then a bird's eye view to get the full scale. Perfect escalation tactics. And all to just end with... Jesus Christ, that ground floor of guards even jumped up to her. What a dynamic circular shot. Ending with a punch to the camera for a sweet smash cut to safety. And from that point, it's all back to dialogue and narrative from there. The scene starts with an argument between Snake and Wolf, and it ends with... You can count on us 
There is no us. Oh yeah, relationship consequences kind of stick. All this leading up to a good guy path can still be subverted by the personal narrative on the side. The action may keep your attention, but the narrative still has its tricks. Also, side note here, I think it's a really cool animation choice they went with for Snake's Teeth. Look at this. That out there, I'm just a scary, good-for-nothing monster. Switching between normal teeth and fangs depending on the mood and intonation. Really smart. Anyway, the gang split up and the conflict continues. That was the scene that changed the bad guys. It's your classic plot twist reveal, hyping you up with an incredibly imaginative action scene and demonstrating so many of the great parts that make the bad guys such a successful film all the while turning the narrative around for the emotive core of the story and the conflict of the group. It's the best scene in the whole runtime for me, and hopefully my gushing over it lets you see why too. For now, I'll end it off here. My name's been Daz, you didn't really care, and I'll see you in a bit.